Every edition of Outside Source, we bring you the biggest stories from around the world. And next, we turn to protests in India. They're connected to a ban on hijabs for girls in school. The protests have spread from the southern state of Karnataka, which is, and to other parts of the country too. 15 people have been arrested in these protests, and the authorities in the state have closed all high schools and colleges for three days. This video went viral on Tuesday. It shows one Muslim student defying the ban by arriving for school in a hijab with a crowd taunting her. The student, Muskan Khan, was escorted by school staff safely inside and she gave a press conference the following day. India is a unified country, so everyone is free to practice their religion. They are following their culture and I'm following mine. They should allow us to follow our culture and not put obstacles. This is all happening in the south of India, in an area where Muslims are in a minority. They make up around 12% of the population in the state, which is majority Hindu. And as the dispute has escalated, students from the Hindu majority have started wearing headscarves to school too. The saffron scarves here are a symbol of their religion. Here's one of them. We asked them not to wear the hijab when they attend. They knew what we told them. Yet today, they've come wearing the hijab. We're not allowed inside the college now, and that's unfair. Well, the education activist Malala Yousafzai has tweeted, refusing to let girls go to school in their hijabs is horrifying. Objectification of women persists for wearing less or more. Indian leaders must stop the marginalisation of Muslim women. Well, here's the reaction to that criticism from the state's Minister of Education. India has not banned hijab. We are allowing hijab to be followed everywhere except the place where uniform has been prescribed. Uniform is a discipline part of the uh, institutions which has every student who want to be in the school has to follow. How can she react to such things? Well, the custom of headscarves for women in Islam is often criticised elsewhere in the world on grounds of feminism or on equal rights. But in this case, liberal voices in India find themselves supporting the girls' right to wear them. Here's the journalist, Barker Dutt. If you ask me as a feminist, am I comfortable with any religious practice that is specific to women and not to men? I would say I'm not. Uh, and that's across religions. If you ask me as a multiculturalist, should there be space for everybody to practice their religion? Absolutely. And finally, if you ask me as, as someone who cares very much about getting more and more girls enrolled in school, I think that's where I draw uh, that line. And so uh, I think you're seeing for once, actually, a healthy democratic debate uh, uh, around this. You can't actually say that there isn't a democratic debate around it. The matter is before the court. The court is referred it to a larger bench. And I think the courts will have to decide whether the hijab, in fact, constitutes essential practice when it comes to Islam. Muslims I've been speaking to are divided, but nobody, uh, at least among, among, among those uh, that I believe in and respect, believes that girls should be denied an education on the basis of this. And it's absolutely shocking and appalling that that has happened. Well, Amber Sanes Rajan is South Asia editor for the BBC World Service, and he's live with us now. Um, Amber Sanes, help me understand the circumstances in which this ban was brought in. Well, these uh, Muslim women students in Karnataka state, they say that it has been going on for the past few weeks. The school authorities have been asking them to remove the hijab so that they can attend classes. Uh, whereas the government side argues that, you know, we have stipulated certain uniform rules and all these uh, women students all of a sudden started wearing the hijab and that's where the problem started. But then we have to look at it from a broader context of why it is happening, why this is triggering so much anger and anxiety among the minority Muslim community. As you said, you know, in India, Muslims are a religious minority. They constitute about 14 to 15 percent of the population. But what has been happening in India over the past few years, especially about, you know, the way the government has, you know, brought in certain laws, for example, anti-conversion laws. And some Muslims have been, you know, beaten for transporting cattle because, you know, the Hindus consider cattle as a sacred. And uh, interfaith couples like Muslim and Hindu couples have been attacked and they've been looked at with suspicion. Mm -hmm. So this is all putting a strain on the Muslim community and they are worried about whether there is anything more to a normal uniform rule and code what the government says it wants to enforce. And Amber San, I've seen claims that right-wing groups in India have involved themselves in this, trying to inflame nationalist sentiment. Is there any basis for those claims? 
You know, there have been a number of uh, rights groups, as well as uh, even Muslim and Christian community leaders. They say that some of the Hindu extremist groups and vigilante groups, they have been behind some of these actions against the minority communities. For example, a number of attacks happened during the Christmas time uh, among the Christian community. You know, prayer halls were disturbed, churches were attacked by alleged Hindu uh, radicals, and they think these groups are behind some of these events. For example, even in the school incident, uh, many people on social media are talking about outsiders even encouraging the Hindu students in these schools, like distributing them shawls and distributing you know, saffron-colored hats so that they can go and protest. You know, they launch a protest against the women coming with the hijab. So this was done by outsiders. Otherwise, students do not have you know, the money or the time to go and buy these uh, shawls, these uh, saffron shawls or the saffron hats. So there is a suspicion that you know, groups from outside, some of these uh, Hindu vigilante groups might be behind. And that is what mm -hmm. many political thinkers, they warn that you know, if this hate speech or even actions against the minority communities are not condemned now, that can lead to further you know, violence and where the hate speech becomes mm -hmm. the mainstream.